Debate. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live, and there's also PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Also below this video, there is a link to get £50 for swapping your UK electricity supplier to Octopus Energy. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear, if you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcomed back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel, so please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. One last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now, we are joined by Neil, 10th man, father of a stolen child, Arwin, who's interrupting my introduction, of course. And who did I miss off? 10th man, Arwin, chocolate, father of a stolen child, Neil, and a whole bunch of people in Discord. So welcome one and all. Hello. Good hey, good morning. Hello, hello. Good afternoon. Morning, George. Morning, Stagoli. Bit of housekeeping. Any evidence of a physical geometric sphere edge horizon, formerly known as Earth curvature? You can only find it in the math. Only in the math, I heard. What was that, Neil? I think the black swan killed it, no? Yeah, black swan killed the physical geometric tangent point horizon used in their geometry to claim Earth curve. That's the physical geometric sphere edge horizon. Blocks, boats and buildings, amongst other things. Now it's refracted, which means it's not a tangent point and they can't derive R to refract it. It's a paradox. Speaking of R, any evidence of the R value? Earth radius. No sound, says Steve. Really? Black swan. Hold on one second. We've got an issue. No sound. It's calculated in a math. Right, talk amongst yourselves while I double check that the stream has actually got audio because it says it's got audio, but someone in the chat how do they get it in the math? Don't listen to Steve Finnerman. <laughs> oh, okay, the sound is fine. Just <laughs> Jolly good. Thank you, Arwin. I'll take your word for it. I've had a sound issue in the pre show, so <laughs> someone saying no sound does trigger me to think, yeah, there is no sound, and there is sound, says Filipino Filipino. Yeah, I think we can move on. Our value, well, I was showing something. How did, how did they get it in the maths? I just conjured it. It's abstract. Like I can create a unicorn in maths if I choose to. The language to describe things. They don't have to be things that are in existence, but you can still describe things. Yeah, but a model of a car is a model of a car. It looks just like a car, but it's a model. Yeah. So how are they getting this heliocentric model? If it's not... You understand what I'm saying? If Earth is not that, how are they getting this model? Okay. Well, in that comparison, Neil... If you've got a production car that people get in and drive and physically exists, and then you compare that to a concept car that's designed in a computer that does not exist, and you say, well, all cars are this model in the computer. Well, they're not. That's a model. Okie dokie. <laughs> and it... Go I got it. I got it. Okay. Any evidence of axial rotation of the Earth-based variety? Deviation. And we don't see that. No, there is no 15 degrees an hour deviation as Earth rotates under things not attached for us to observe Coriolis effect. There is no drift. We don't have Earth-based Coriolis effect, we'd notice. It, isn't what spinning is supposed to be a, a, a ball? Don't we need the ball first before whatever is spinning is spinning? We do, but we don't the have assertion... a ball, right? See question one. Well, yes, that's true for the heliocentric assertion, but Coriolis effect is a real effect. You can observe it from a roundabout. Just throw a ball off a roundabout and watch how it seems to curve away from you, even though it's travelling straight. It's because you're turning underneath. That's Coriolis. So you don't need a turning sphere for Coriolis, but they assert their turning sphere has something we'll call Earth-based Coriolis. 
So that show on Netflix is not correct? What show on Netflix about what? Beyond the Curve that claims that there's a 15 degree an hour drift proven by a, a flat earther himself. If Earth was turning underneath a gyroscope at 15 degrees an hour, that implies Coriolis drift, i.e. Earth has a non-inertial turning reference frame turning beneath a gyro to cause the effect of it seeming to drift. Gyros don't drift, that's their inherent property that's useful. And their inherent property seems to be in defiance when we observe things like ring laser gyros, according to the claim on this Netflix show. But that leaves a very severe problem. If the claim, which they very much make, of Coriolis drift at 15 degrees an hour, non-inertial turning Earth underneath an inertial turning, uh, non-inertial turning Earth underneath an inertial reference frame, then we'd see things drifting away. Not because they actually drift, but because we're turning underneath, like us turning under a ball thrown from a roundabout. It seems like the ball curves. Well, things in the air would seem like they're curving away from us. So your drone, if we had Coriolis, would go up, and then Earth would turn underneath it. It would whiz away on the equator at a thousand miles an hour. Not because we are seeing a drone that can fly at a thousand miles an hour, but because it's claimed Earth's turning underneath it. But that doesn't happen. We're not turning underneath anything. Nothing's drifting ever. I... The reason I ask is because I was talking to someone on chat, a baller, and he's telling me that a roundabout is a small scale, so you're going to see it. On a big scale like Earth, you're not going to see it. So he's actually fighting against his own claim then. Yeah, that's well, called cognitive Neil. dissonance. So in terms of Coriolis effect, it's the most cognitive dissonance-laden subject in this entire arena because upon debunking their claim that we have an observation of 15 degrees an hour drift, Neil... They're claiming we will see drift. But when we point out that we don't, they say, we don't see drift. <laughs> yeah? That's cognitive we never dissonance. We never expected to. Again? We, we, never ex we never expected to see drift when we said <laughs> exactly. we see drift. <laughs> As a matter of fact, show me citation that my claim is that we're supposed to see this drift that the globe <laughs> claims that we're supposed to see. Thanks. It happened on Arwen's show today. It was absolutely priceless. So Arwen's talking about Earth Curve. And from the chat, they someone from the chat said words to the effect of, we don't claim a Earth Curve edge in geometry. I think that's actually your claim. Only flat earthers claim Earth Curve edge geometry. That's literally what he told Arwen to try and resolve his cognitive dissonance. It was hysterical. We claim geometry now. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> really? Yeah, apparently, wow, Earth Curve Edge Geometry is a flat Earth claim now. That's how bad cognitive dissonance is getting for the fundies who think the Earth's a sphere chocolate. Hey, everyone. How are things? Very well, Brian. Good to have you. Hello, Brian. Hey, Chocolate. Hey, Nathan. Um, you know this thing about the Coriolis? You know what happened to them? Uh, uh, Louis Foucault, uh, he's pendulum, and the claims around it came out. Um, before there was helicopters and airplanes and things like that. So they could make the claim because there was nothing there for anyone to reference. But as soon as there started being things in the sky for everyone to reference, they had to change the claim. But they're still going back and claiming the, the pendulum, that the earth is rotating underneath the pendulum, whereas they can't make the same claim about an airplane because it's not happening. So they're caught between the past and the present. Yeah, good point, Brian, because uh, prior to the airplane, the hot air balloon, the helicopters, any of that, uh, they had a claim is the sun. And the sun is proven Coriolis, according to them. Well, fine. I mean, an airplane was designed and was in the air. All of a sudden, it's not. Yeah, I think the Wright brothers had to actually throw out a lot of the, what they were told was going to happen to actually give it a go, uh, to actually give the whole airplane thing go. They had to actually go against what they were told was physics. Well, like I'm saying, uh, they're saying that we're going around the sun. And like you said, until these inventions, well, then they have to realize, oh, my gosh, uh, the sun's going around us and we're stationary because the airplane. Hmm. The flight east to west should be shorter. Hmm. It's not. Earth's not turning towards me, west to east. Come on, it's, it's right there. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, and now they're claiming to Nathan that uh, Earth is rotating underneath uh, pendulums and balls dropped back in 1894 or 1762 or some nonsense like that. What before there was ever a hot air balloon, you know, uh, an airplane, anything. You know, so it was easy to make the claim back then. But now they're still trying to claim those same stupid things from from. That's why they keep going back to things like the, the pendulum and uh, the ball being dropped from uh, a high tower because that was the original claim. But, you know, now they, they don't have that. There's no reference point outside the sun. We, but we, they can't claim the sun because we don't see that but, with airplanes. You remember the, you remember the, the video? The funniest the thing is that as soon as they put a vehicle in the air or something like that, it would have proven their claim if it was true. Exactly. Yeah. But they could have came clean. Instead, they instead they double down. They, they wouldn't have to. They would they would see what they already claim they expect to see, right? So, well, until until recently, problem? I thought it was a, an excellent argument, and that all of the fundies on the globe side were so incredibly well trained because they could immediately brace against their actual claim, as frustrating as that was for me. Now I just appreciate that they're actually in a severe case of cognitive dissonance. They're holding two positions that can't both be true at the same time. You can't have. The claim that Earth is turning to cause the sun to move. In other words, relative to our position, the sun is stationary in the heliocentric model. We're turning to cause it to appear to move. Well, that's Coriolis deviation. Us as a non-inertial turning reference frame, turning beneath an inertial reference frame with the sun in it, seeming to drift, not because it's actually moving, but because we're moving underneath it. That is Coriolis effect. Well, once you've got that effect established, it means that we've got a turning Earth underneath things that aren't attached anymore. And that is precisely what they claim. The moment we show them that it isn't happening with a drone or a hot air balloon or anything else that's in the air, they say, I think you, the flat earther, are the one that's claiming Earth should turn underneath. We don't claim that. It's like, yeah, you do. It just doesn't happen. Therefore, leaving you in cognitive pain because of your cognitive dissonance. Well, they tried to blame the projectiles at first, claiming that uh, these things are powered, which has well, nothing to do with it. Well, let me let me uh, uh, remind you of the video. Remember the video of the two guys in the desert shooting the fifty caliber straight up, and then they run and hide under a table, and they're expecting. Of course, if you're a glober, you say, "Why are you running and hiding under a table? The Earth is turning, and it and it and and it turns under a bullet. So just shoot it up and stand there because there it's going to turn under a bullet. It doesn't under a plane though, but a bullet it should." And these guys run and hide under a table, and then you could hear the bullet land next to them. Let's break out this nonsense diversion tactic. When they start talking about the projectile, Coriolis effect is only observable from the turning reference frame. So as you turn beneath something not attached, it seems to drift. So you're on a roundabout looking at a tree. You're spinning and the tree seems to come towards you. That's Coriolis effect. So the tree's not actually moving. And in the heliocentric model, the sun's not actually moving. It just appears to because you're turning beneath it. The tree appears to move because you're turning beneath it. The sun appears to move because it's claimed Earth is turning beneath it. Now, that effect would also be manifest in anything else that's not attached if we have the effect. So we say, OK, you ballers claim Earth turns underneath to cause this effect, Coriolis deviation. Well, we don't see that. It doesn't happen. It's not occurring. And they then challenge us to prove that they claim that they have Earth turning underneath, which is Coriolis effect. That's cognitive dissonance. It's also old and busted. <laughs> Try that shit now. <laughs> I actually have fun when they start saying that nonsense. Because it shows how much pain they are in. Especially when one guy wants to argue for the ball being deviated because the earth is rotating underneath, but the same guy won't argue that the drone is do ain't doing the same thing. You guys need to get a grip. Well, Zanuck <laughs> seems to think Nathan's got it all wrong, that greasy car salesman. Used car salesman. Ch chocolate, the argument you just said is akin to someone uh, having a bank balance of $10,000 and then going to the bank, withdrawing the $10,000 and expecting to see the balance still at $10,000. Yeah, pretty much. Sounds like my wife. <laughs> but they take it to the projectile, bottom line, they take it to the projectile and start detailing the actual path of the trajectory that it's going to move through. 
and how it's curving or not curving or accounting for curving. And that's not Coriolis because you only observe it from the ground. So as soon as they start saying, well, the hovercraft has got propellers. Oh, really? Well, Coriolis is only observed from the ground. So you're supposed to be on the ground, turning beneath it, watching it seem to drift. Nothing to do with the hovercraft's actual motion. Nothing to do with the drone's actual motion. Nothing to do with the hot air balloon's actual motion. Nothing to do with the sun's actual motion in the heliocentric model. It's claimed to be us turning beneath it that causes the effect. So for us to have the effect, we're turning beneath things not attached. And we're not. Roll on their demand for us to prove that they claim Earth turns beneath stuff. I.e. Coriolis effect. Their claim. Because the cognitive pain leads them to demand we prove their claim. Uh, no, it just doesn't happen. So wait, there's no correcting yep. for Coriolis either? That's a fairy tale too? <laughs> no, correcting for Coriolis is a misnomer because to say that you're correcting for Coriolis would be to suggest the following. Me on a roundabout in a playground, I look up and see an aeroplane and I go, oh, look, it's just turned around 180 degrees. Well, has it? It looks like it has because I'm on a roundabout. Does the plane need to account for that? observation from the ground of not actual not actual deflection that's the plane seeming to turn around but not actually turning around just me on a roundabout beneath it turning that's the effect there's no chance in hell that the plane is going to get a radio command from ground control saying flight 0357 you have a man beneath you on a roundabout he's observing you seem to drift please can you correct for this no so when it comes to Coriolis effect in terms of its actual description, which is what they claim on a globe, they will be claiming it from the ground because it's a ground-based observation. A non-inertial turning reference frame is their claim, and that's what's supposed to be proving it. You on it, spinning, seeing things seem to drift. That's the globe's claim. Well, all you've got to do is show that it doesn't happen to debunk it. And as I say, roll on them demanding you prove that they claim Earth turns beneath stuff. Well, that's Coriolis. Yeah, you do claim it just doesn't happen. <laughs> well, they do. They do. Uh, they do go crazy and say it only happens north and south. Also, oh, then it does happen. Then well, we well, see that shit. Well, we don't yeah. see that either. But that's what they. Well, the, go the the reason they say it only happens north to south is because when you apply it east to west, then the effect would be that flight times would appear to be faster and slower. Because we don't see that, they've got to try and excuse that away. But if the Earth was turning, we would see that, and because we don't see it, they've got to explain it away. So they're just compensating by excuse for why it isn't there. Well, it isn't there because the Earth's not turning. If anything, it indicates it's going the other way because a lot of flights going um, east to west seem to be f supporting the idea that the Earth's rotating the opposite way. Obviously, I'm not saying that it does that. I'm just I'm showing that it doesn't even it, go it seems to go directly against them. Well, well actually, I, 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 I add to that. I, I feel like they make it worse for themselves. In fact, by saying that there's Coriolis north to south, or sorry, north or south or even east or west, especially when concerned in projectiles, they're idiots. Because then they would have to show at least one formula that would account for every varying degree, be it north, west, south, east, and in between. They would have to show some formula that would account for this. They cannot do so. They never have. But what's hilarious is that that claim of it would only happen north or south usually comes right after the claim of it doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> are you kidding? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go and get me a citation, says the Glober. Prove we claim Earth turns underneath stuff. That doesn't happen. It only happens if you're traveling north or south. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, 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 <laughs> do you know what they say with what projectiles, I... which is quite funny? They say that projectiles, the reason that they rotate under projectiles is because they travel at such velocities that they actually begin to negate the Earth's also spinning atmosphere. But obviously, first you would have to prove that the actual Earth itself is spinning on an axis before you could assert that the actual atmosphere itself is also spinning before the bullet itself would be able to even be affected or, should I say, defeat said rotating atmosphere. How many, how many times do they want to lie? Well, that, exactly what they're arguing against, doing is arguing against Coriolis being an observable effect. 
to then claim that there's a minor effect that's an actual deflection that the bullet's going to have to compensate for. And you're only going to induce that if you're going at a certain velocity and you haven't got engines and a certain other number of caveats. But then if I drop a ball down a tall tower, Earth will turn underneath that in 1873. You know, or if I spin a gyro, Earth will turn underneath that. <laughs> In 1873. In 1873. Shout out to Sam. As I said, as I was saying on the show the other day, the claim they came up with, where this is, which is the most non-logical claim of all time, which is that the atmosphere, and we have to use the, I have to say sphere because I'm talking about their rhetoric. Their atmosphere rotates with the globe out. That's total nonsense because. Well, not just that that's not nonsense, but if the atmosphere was rotating, where it somehow had a, had a friction layer with the surface of the Earth, and it all rotated at 15 degrees an hour with the globe out, then a plane flying from London to, uh, let's say, London to uh, Chicago, or to be somewhat, somewhat uh, straight east-west, then that wouldn't matter because the atmosphere is going past that plane at 15 degrees an hour. So that plane would still be shorter by several hours. I mean, flying from London to Los Angeles should be four or five hours, not 11. I know, that kind of thing. But it's not. It's 11 hours. It doesn't matter what claim they make about this. This atmosphere rotating with the globe, that won't change it. Because if you're flying east to west, you're going through this 15 degrees an hour, whatever miles per hour you want to, they want to put on it, an atmosphere that's moving with the surface. So it's nonsense. Yeah, it's also it's violated also by the multiple directions of surface winds that we actually encounter. Multiple surface directions gives you a complete debunk of that claim. But that claim is in violation of their actual claim that Earth turns beneath stuff to cause Coriolis effect. So they're fighting against the claim of Coriolis in the first instance. Yeah, but even with that like, claim, it's, it it's, it's like a self okey doke. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but. The cognitive dose. Yeah, I'm just saying. Sorry, oh, Brian. I was just saying, even with that claim, it doesn't change it. It wouldn't matter if you're flying east to west. That wouldn't change it because the air atmosphere you're flying through is moving past you at 15 degrees an hour, and you're flying at 550 miles per hour. So it doesn't matter. The atmosphere that's connected to the earth is moving with the earth. You're not moving with the atmosphere. You're flying through it. So right. it, that doesn't change anything. It's only, yeah. a, it's only, it's only like a... Um, like a, a mind twist is all that is. Indeed. It's something that YouTube from the chat is often um, keen for people to discuss. In other words, when they claim north-south, they'd still have a deflection observable and it would still muck up the flight time. So it doesn't help them in any way, shape or form. So why not just point that out? Well, the reason I don't like to point that out is because you're into begging the question of their defence of why we don't see Coriolis effect in the first instance to then change it into Globiolus effect, which is a claim of a label Coriolis <laughs> effect with a description of angular uh, speed change and then transposed into linear speed changes as travelling north on a rotating sphere they've assumed won't give you Coriolis from the ground anymore. It's like you're into so much nonsense to try and work with their cognitive dissonance. It's like, why work with them? Just say, no, you claim Earth turns beneath, that's what Coriolis is. Doesn't happen. Well, no, it doesn't happen because yep. we're travelling not... No, no, that's what Coriolis is. Either it happens or it doesn't. Don't explain why it doesn't. I don't care. That's your claim to Word. spin. Go on, whoever that is. Either. Brian? Yeah, no, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm not even speaking north to south. I'm speaking east to west. Their claim wouldn't change that. But they have people believing it would. But people didn't give it any logical thought. Their claim of an atmosphere moving at 15 degrees an hour west to east wouldn't change it. The flight would, not, it would still be only four hours from London to Los Angeles or whatever. Rather than 11 hours, which is what it is. I know I, I understand why you wouldn't argue that point in that way, because what's the point in getting into the weeds? But that wouldn't change. It still doesn't change our claim. It doesn't matter if the atmosphere is moving. The plane is flying through the atmosphere. It's moving past eight at 15 degrees an hour. And the plane is flying in the opposite way at 500 miles an hour. So it's no different. If that, if that atmosphere is moving with the ground and the ground is moving underneath, is moving with the, the atmosphere is moving with the ground and it's all going at 15 degrees an hour, 
then that plane is flying through atmosphere or it's coming past this at 15 degrees an hour. How many times have we had a baller on this show come make the claim of Earth's rotation? Let's take one hour as a marker. So they come on the show, they say Earth is spinning at 15 degrees an hour. Then they take 59 minutes and 45 seconds saying, and trying to explain why we don't observe it. And then asking, end up asking you, can, can you show me a citation that that's my claim? As I've made that claim an hour ago. <laughs> can you, pr can you prove no, it for me? Or, can you prove that my claim is true, even though it's my claim? Matter of fact, prove that my claim is my claim. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Guys, that is that is the summary of cognitive dissonance in essence, though. So let's move on. Any evidence you can have gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container to press upon? Oh, oh, oh. Hell I've got a, no. I've got a really good video to show you on this. Do you want to sh uh, share my screen, Nathan, please? Sure. So, everybody talks about, um, how do you have gas pressure without a container? Now, let's be honest, that's the layman's word or the layman's phrase to describe it. Um, the actual scientific phrase is the dual free expansion of gas. So, if let's just, I'll, it's only a minute long, I'll just show you what happens. So, obviously, these all these gas molecules are behind this divide here, and all that happens is it goes out into the empty vacuum of space. Do you notice that all these are contained within a container, right? So, if Earth was on the inside there, Earth would be bouncing off, the, the molecules would be bouncing off the surface of the Earth. But in their model, the gas molecules are all on the outside of the container, right? Not on the inside of the container. That would be hollow earth kind of thing. But the point is, when the barrier goes across, and you'll see it now, obviously the gas expands into what we call the, the vacuum of space. And, and it's called the dual free expansion of gas. So when we say any evidence of gas pressure without a container, what we should say is, how does the earth violate the dual free expansion of gas because that's what obviously would happen. All the gas would fill the available volume. Now, bear in mind, this is all on the inside of a fish tank. In their model, there is no fish tank. So if the room was the vacuum of space that this tank's in, obviously that same number of molecules would be bouncing all around the room. Well, if the room, instead of being the size that it is, if the room was the size of the infinite void of space, what do you think those molecules do? The same number of molecules go throughout the whole infinitely expanding vacuum of space. So how do we then have the pressure? And the answer, of course, is we don't. But this is just a, the way to like refine that phraseology, the dual free expansion of gas. I just wanted people to be aware. It's only a minute long, and you can find it on Yaf yeah, Physics Animations. It's probably the best one I've seen because it's nice and clear. I'm done. Indeed, if the sky was a vacuum, the gas we breathe would expand in all directions to fill the availability of volume it had to fill. In other words, the gas we breathe would fill the space. And they claim the sky is a space called space. Well, gas would fill it. We'd all be dead. Space is fake. There is no sky vacuum. Two litre yeah. bottles of pop. Two litre bottles of soda prove that their model's wrong. A great right. scholar once came here and told us that gas tends to wander off and run around. Shout out to Rumpus. They have not retracted. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, say that. Right. <laughs> Sleeping Warrior yeah, and Crack Villain. But can both of you back off your mics a bit? I'm having to fiddle with the volumes of both of you constantly. Any evidence of a self perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical earth? I said it no. in my song. It's been a wrap for this molten iron core. <laughs> Yeah, shout out to Paul Voigt who promised us that there were articles that we just wouldn't understand about three years ago. Still waiting for them, Paul. Back to Anthony. Thank you. <laughs> any, sci any scientific evidence of gravity? Oh, yeah, I've got another presentation, Nathan. Oh, okay. It's only a quick one. Right, so... Go back to that. All right, so... Um, Obviously, there's the there's an alternative like proposition put forward at the moment, um, and it's 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 asserted that there is an incoherent dielectric acceleration. Well, the problem with that is that we don't see it in the real world. We don't see any evidence of this incoherent dielectric acceleration. So unless we can get something to establish the claim that there is this downwards bias perception, 
that isn't explained with relative density or isn't explained just by virtue of mass being more dense than the air it's in, then from now on, we now need to refer to the incoherent dielectric acceleration simply as incoherent diatribe. Now, I'll, I'll define incoherent in this context. It just means incomprehensible or confusing. And diatribe is a forceful and bitter attack against something that in this case will be relative density. So in future, let's not call it incoherent dielectric acceleration. We'll call it incoherent diatribe until we can see some evidence of the downward bias because it clearly doesn't exist. Things do go up. I'm done. I've got no issue with the incoherent dielectric acceleration because that, as far as I can see, has been demonstrated quite admirably. It's the downward bias bit that I've got an issue with, not the incoherent yeah, dielectric downward acceleration bias bit. Yeah. bit. Yeah, so until we see that downward bias, we're not going to call it incoherent dielectric acceleration because if it doesn't apply to Earth, it's essentially a solenoid. He's kind of making a solenoid with the application of like like technology um, using things that are useful. But if it doesn't apply real world, then it's not science, and that's the bit that we want to establish. So where is it? Can we see it? Wait, do, you, do you not know what a solenoid is? What do you think a solenoid is? Me? Yeah. You said solenoid. It's the movement. It's the movement of something with a foot, with a with a current. It's it's like the bolt. They use it with bolts on doors to allow uh, entry. So they press a button, it passes a current through, which charges a copper coil, which then um, passes through or around a bar, and then it repulses it into and out of its position. And essentially, that's what they're doing with the um, the fleck of paint that jumps between the two gaps. They're passing a current, and it acts like a solenoid. I kind of see what you're saying now. I, I know what a solenoid is. I just didn't really understand how you were linking it to it. Now I do. I, I see how you've loosely connected it. It's, it's just not a great analogy in my opinion. But there we go. Yeah, solenoid if you say so. I, um, I, um, I might say something about the whole gravity and gas pressure issue. Um, their claim of what's holding a gas pressure or causing a gas pressure gradient and holding gas pressure to the surface of the Earth in their model uh, is a force of gravity. But anyone who is interested in looking into it will very quickly, there's loads of videos on YouTube, loads of them explaining the theory of general relativity and special relativity, and explaining how it's the curvature of space-time by uneven the uneven distribution of mass that causes this effect of the curvature of space-time. And the curvature of space-time is gravity because it gives us the, the appearance of apparent orbits. This is the claim. There is no force of gravity. So there is no way in, with the present description of gravity, that's on its way out, by the way, with, it, with the present description of gravity from Albert Einstein since 1915, there is absolutely no way within that description that a force could be, let's just say, attracting to two masses together. So there is no description, there is, not, not, there is no actual explanation in the global model for their atmosphere uh, being connected to the surface of their globe or for the gas pressure gradient that is within that atmosphere. But there's also no explanation for how come the astronauts that supposedly went to the moon we're jumping around with one sixth gravity, as Albert Einstein had debunked gravity as a force, you know, decades previous. So I don't, I don't know where they're going with this. Like they're literally not even after catching up to Einstein, and he's about to be thrown out. Well, they've kept it live as a as a force in sci-fi, haven't they? So if you take Star Wars for example, for instance, what's the force in Star Wars? I mean, it's literally him tied upside down when about to be attacked by a yeti, forcing. An object of mass to come to him or moving yeah. things so, right yeah but that, that yeah, that's yeah, mixed yeah. up what they where star wars came from i just throw that in there is that came from japanese mythology and the force that they are speaking about in Jap japanese mythology is known as ki not don't, not to be confused with chinese chi ki ki is a way of spelling it in english ki uh, and it's like a force of spirit. Uh, it's like, um, it's where they, I won't go into too much about it, but it's where the idea for the Incredible Hulk came from as well. It's like uh, somebody suddenly being able to have superpowers. 
You know, no, and a kid, I, that is I all, get it. All I get it. No, don't, yeah. don't get me wrong, Brian. I, I realise that that's how it's punted. And if you if you look up anything about Star Wars, that's yeah. how it's punted. Especially when you look at things like Darth Vader's helmet, you know, which is shaped like one of their war helmets. Well, yeah, yeah. I get it. But I'm still drawing the same parallel. What is the force actually doing in Star Wars? Even though when you're describing key, it's the internal force that you externalize as you punch. Well, that's not what we're talking about when we talk about him literally making that mass come towards his hand. He's attracting mass now, isn't he? Well, yeah, but see, that's what they did. They used the Japanese uh, key, uh, which is uh, they used that mythology and they mixed in the word force with it you know, and cause a mass attracting mass thing going on. Like, so I'm not going against you. I'm just saying where that came from and how they mixed it in. Because yeah. the Incredible Hulk, as I say, that, that comes from, uh, the best way to describe key, just give just a, a, an explanation of it. It's not about internal stuff. Uh, like that's Chinese chi stuff. That's, that's a different thing altogether. There was a lady back in 1978 or 74 in California, and she drove a big station wagon with her child in it through a barrier of, uh, and went down an embankment. And the child was caught underneath the, the car, but she was thrown from the car. And she, the car went on fire, and the only way to save the child was to lift the car, the car off the child. And out of desperation, the woman lifted the car up and got the child out. So that's what key is. So it's like, it's, it's like having like this superpowers. That's what that, that's what that is. So that's a true story. Or whatever. Super Saiyan, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Green? I don't know. As no, a, but... It's normally introduces an element of discord where they may not get involved because we're talking about Star Wars and key and things like that. Yeah, that has also been explained when people have had like I've I've seen a description of it from a rock climber, and what happened was a, a two or three ton boulder fell on him, and he was capable of pushing it off. In other words, his muscles in that moment instinctually drew up the energy to push this boulder off himself in that moment and it's the same with lifting a couple of tons of car or a ton of car the same principle in that moment your body says it doesn't matter how much damage this causes to you and it will damage you but you're going to use every last fiber of energy that is in that muscle to do whatever is required of course it fucks you up excuse my french good and proper afterwards <laughs> Well, there was different definitions of it, like because it was it was used in war, like people who just were able to just go cut through the enemy in war times, who could take out person after person after person after person. And every war has has people who's done that. You know what I mean? Everyone who's been in war will know of people who've kind of done the extreme stuff that was you couldn't train for. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, so that's, that's, that's another topic. I can't that's let that thing. lie. Name one. Yeah. Well, that goes back to... Uh, the hold on, crack villain. You just made a claim, Brian. Go ahead. Name one. One person. Name one, with, what? one person. That, that Not a second-hand story that you've heard from another man. Name one person who's that person in war who's done that. Who has done... Who's, uh, who's been able to take out people after person after person. Yep. Rambo. Uh, not fictional. I can do it. Non fiction. Well, I can. Well, there's, there's yeah, there's, there's some pretty famous uh, war veterans out there who've got, done the. Can, can I just name two? Uh, I'll put this across. Simo, because... hey, uh... Okay, there's a there's a certain group of people, and JLB is one of them. He thinks the entire yeah. story of war is a complete hoax. And when you hear people telling their stories, it's more down to their wanting to meet people's expectations rather than saying, yeah, we demolished quite a lot of stuff. We did a bit of building. We moved a few farmers around, sat around playing cards and getting drunk quite a lot. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, whereas if you tell the heroic <laughs> Rambo story, and now I'm not saying I buy this. I don't know anything about it. I'm just intrigued to know, given that Brian's obviously of the opinion that people can cut through using key <laughs> in war where they're taking down the enemy. <laughs> I don't know, it might be well, true. It's a, it just comes from uh, it comes from stories of people who did. It comes from uh, there's different ways I could portray it. It's just that was one of the one of the ways, like the, the, where someone did something that was beyond the normal. It's like the best, a, a, a more basic way of explaining it is like you know when you out of nowhere fall by accident, let's say a slip or something, and you save yourself. You twist in the air or you do something to save yourself. And you do it at such speed, and it's and you, you save yourself from banging your head or whatever, 
and you do it at such speed that you could never train to be able to do that. It was just something that you just did in the moment. It's like that's right. what's key. It's like, it's like, like, like when you that. knock a glass off the counter and you're fast enough to catch it midair. Do that shit yeah, all the time. So, like, <laughs> yeah, like, that's something reactionary like that. speed. What you're saying is. Speed. Can I just mention a couple of names just to save him a little bit then? So you're talking about people such as Simo or Simana Haya, right? A man, he was known for sort of, he, he used the KP-31 a lot, but he was a sniper, right? Um, He killed roughly over 500 men, okay? Um, in World War, uh, in the World War, right? He was a Finnish sniper. Anyway, um, he, I know what you're on about, Michael but, Whitman. Yeah, he, like, I know, but that, that, that is kind of it, but it's not really because I'm talking about the white, like, yeah, someone who just um went past what they were should have been able to do, like that lady. It wasn't just her muscles. The berserk is that spirit. Cow, you know, sure, that sure. I, I think I, I appreciate what you're trying to do, Cracklin, but. That's my aside from Brian's point that in certain circumstances you can go above and beyond what you might be physically capable of. That's described as key. I've forgotten why we were talking about key in the first instance, though, Brian. Maybe you can get us back on track. Force of gravity and Star Wars. Star Wars, the force. Of course, it's me thinking, how can I generate a bit more discussion amongst people who might be a little timid? Well, if we talk about Star Wars, normally people are pretty, pretty much comfortable with that, right? Talk about the concept of non-inertial turning reference frames underneath inertial reference frames to cause not actual deflection observed from the ground, and that might intimidate them. But Star Wars, yeah, man, people will get involved, won't they? Moving on, any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics? Or incoherent no. acceleration theorists. Is there an experiment, or at, uh, at least a hypothesis to go with it, and are they astronomers, cosmologists, or astrophysicists? Or incoherent dielectric acceleration accelerationists. How about Adam. just observe and declare? Adam. We're on to Hopping viable ice. hypotheses. Just so you know where we're at. <laughs> no. Ah. Uh. I need a demonstration of that, please. <laughs> you need to prove that that's your your claim. What they claim science. In fact, you, need to, you, 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 I... you need a demonstration of how there is no hypothesis from these claim uh, no, pseudoscience. Actually Neil, <laughs> actually, Neil, you need to prove that it's chocolate's claim. Back off your mic a little bit. Okay, sorry. It's all right. I, I, this I just... dielectric acceleration, first of all, the incoherent. That's the funny part of it. The incoherent. I love the word incoherent. Yeah. Brilliant. It, 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 sorry. It is. Let me just get it straight. The neck look... uh, hold on. Just, I want to clear this up. Are the people on the panel that deny this electrostatic effect? No. Uh, we said Neil, we do. We can, hold on. We can Neil. rub a balloon and stick it uh, to a wall. Yeah, uh, you said yes. Mean. I get you. Okay, you don't deny. Hey, Neil, what are you? Do you, are I you don't deny it. This effect doesn't exist. I never said that. What they're claiming it does doesn't exist. Which is what? Gravity. Downward bias. Downward bias. Oh, I want to see it, please. AKA a a gravity. I'm balloon in my room and it's up in the air for days now. Okay, I'll put the kettle on. <laughs> I'll get my balloon. I'll add a bit of salt to my water and make my egg go up. <laughs> okay, we're exactly. all there. That's our demonstration that it's not what they claim it is. So if they're going to keep on claiming <laughs> it, then they better have some sort of answer for the balloon and the kettle and everything else that goes up. And my egg, my egg. Don't forget my egg. More like <laughs> it. The egg. That's yeah, experiment. This is much more like it. With your, the, the, with your egg, Anthony, the argument's over easy. <laughs> that's, that's the best <laughs> one so far. That's excellent. That, that boom, boom. was good. Excellent. No. Okay. Moving on. Excellent. That's a good one, Nathan. Good one, Nathan. <laughs> you sure made them toast. No, that was good, Nathan. But, but this is much better than the. When you said it. This is better than the shit show yesterday, where we're discussing personal attributes to this argument, which is over in thirty seconds. Let's be honest, right? And that's really all the only sort of effort we need to put in. What's the argument? Well, the argument says a downward bias. <laughs> you know, in chat, I'd put a little arrow to myself and write, turns on kettle. <laughs> that would be the end of the argument. Watch your steam go up. Well, that's what it was about yesterday anyway, but we'll let it go. 
a little only, bit of salt to the medium. The, the only... Sorry, Nathan, I'm glad it. No, I'm agreeing. I'm saying this is much more like yesterday. All I wanted to do, and Chocolate wanted to do, and Eli wanted to do, was go, <laughs> you know, Chocolate's like, yeah, I'm walking around with a helium balloon right now. <laughs> you know, because that's the only bit that matters. Well, it's the the only argument, really, from us to them uh, is uh, the cause and effect argument. The, 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 they have been asserting, up to now, they have been asserting that this causes things to go down. But also, uh, they have been kind of, even though they've claimed that they were biased, biased, they've also been kind of claiming, if you look into it, uh, a bit of an upward uh, vector too. So it's the cause and effect is where I'm at with it. It's like, just, okay, there's, we have the effect. We have the, the DV. Uh, what's the cause? You know well, what I mean? So... I'm glad Adam's here because I, 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 while I sat on, tell that I'm not comfortable with this subject because I sat in on the conversations between Quantum Eraser, Dr. John D and Adam and followed along for the most part, but kept pretty quiet. You know, when, when you don't know, you just keep your mouth shut and listen, which is what I did. And the end conclusion of our week's worth of discussions between three much more intelligent people than myself was that it's a second order effect of entropy. In other words, to, to, to ascertain the cause of this is to say, what's, what's the cause of things changing over time? Well, you're never going to get to that. Not, not with the kit we've got at the moment. Well put, Adam. It's not to say that somebody in time might figure out the cause of entropy. I don't want to be so bold to say it's not possible. QE has said that, and more power to him. I don't feel comfortable making that statement with my limited knowledge of the second law of thermodynamics. So, yeah, someone might figure out the cause of entropy. I've got to be honest, though, I doubt it. I don't know if Adam feels the same, given that no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't well, put any money on it. <laughs> exactly. I couldn't preclude it. Exactly. I wouldn't put any money on it either. That's the best way to put it. Well, it's a creative. I'd put, I'd I'd put money on it. You'd put money on what? Just be specific, QE. I'd put money on you never finding out. That's what I th yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, you, you would emphatically say no one's going to figure the course of entropy. I don't think exactly. I'd be so emphatic. I know you are. I, I, I have the answer. You've got the course no, of entropy. You won't. Hold on, Nobel Prize. No, you won't. <laughs> no, it ain't Nobel yeah. Prize. You won't. You're asking the wrong question. That's the whole problem. You're in a category error. Oh, okay. What do you mean but, we're in a category uh, error? Ah, uh, okay. You're in a category error. Yeah, what right. is question? You'll never figure out the cause. Can't be it's science. Not, well, I won't say never. <laughs> you can ask him when you bow before him. Well, that was going to be my answer. <laughs> oh, you were going to say God? Say. Oh, then let's hear it, Brian. Go ahead, Brian. What were you going to say? But that. That was my answer. It's that the, this place ha is created. We are created. The cause of creation and the cause of entropy by proxy is the creator. Yeah, that's correct. The the start the of cause. where does the change begin? The start of change over time in the beginning, <laughs> right? Well, double slit quantum eraser, whichever experiment you like, is proving that you need knowledge. You need a knower at the start of that process. So, where does the beginning of the change over time begin? God. Exactly. Look up the ontological primitives if you want to know more. Do we have all the housekeeping questions? I can't think of any that we didn't cover. Any evidence of the distance to the sun? <clears throat> uh, what is the sun? Oh, no, next Distance's question. Anthony. I give my Neil deGrasse Tyson response. Don't know. Next question. Of course, that's in regards to gravity for him. Hey, that was my intro. <laughs> well, what's the other one? We don't know. Magic speed. <laughs> magic speed. The magic speed thing has come up several times in the last week or so. So I think it was you that brought it up first, Chocolate, right, with the trajectory that an asteroid would have to take to make the craters on the moon. Do you want to just run his comments or Neil deGrasse Tyson's comments back past us? Turns out there is a magic speed. That's Creation Bear. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out there's a magic speed. 
it's the way he says it like he's talking to a fifth grade class like wow guys there's a magic spoon it's insane but isn't that isn't that though the programming where they have somebody who speaks to them as if it's somebody who's who's on television on sesame street street speaking to children because that is what people crave they crave that kind of uh to be taught, they crave to be to be uh, to spoke to like that by someone on TV, but not somebody in real life. Is that some Street? Is that yeah. Street still yeah, going? Yeah, because the guy he's talking to just says, "Wow, yeah, that's got to be it." If Sesame Street's still going, I'm willing to bet a pound that Neil deGrasse Tyson's been on it at some stage. Is it still a show? At all? What kind yes, of Neil deGrasse. Yes, he has, and yes, it's still a show. Boom! I absolutely knew it. So he has been on Sesame Street. I knew it. Hey, Nathan, since we're uh, on the sun, uh, can you go back to that last slide I showed you of the sun coming in with parallel rays? And then I've got two short videos. Just turn the volume down of the sun in actuality. Sure, it's on screen with your description in cartoon form of parallel rays. Sleeping. Okay, so they say the sun's rays are coming in parallel. Now just go through these two videos and you're going to see something that's going to blow that whole thing away because you see crepuscular rays. And as the sun is setting or rising, what should the light source do if it's coming in parallel rays? Should it follow a local sun that seems to be going away? Or should the whole horizon at one time have the same glow as it goes away? Interesting. That's an interesting question. But watch the video. It's obviously crepuscular, comes in at angles, not parallel. It shows it right there. And then as it sets, it the sun, the local sun, not their 93 million mile sun, if rays were coming parallel, the whole horizon should have that same sun effect of going down from side to side, and it doesn't. It's getting darker and darker. How has he got this shot? Um, this, this, who, how do we observe this in the Discord? Again, crack villain. How do we observe this uh, from within the inside of the Discord, guys? Oh, you just have to get to the live stream. I'll, I'll, I'll post it for you. Give sure. me a second. Yeah, if, or you can go to the live stream if that if you're capable. Uh, I'm going to share this guy's link. This imagery is absolutely sensational. Where did you find this? Uh, just I uh, typed in, you know, time lapse sun, and there's more than this. These these are just beautiful ones. Though. Absolutely, I'm going to play it again. I don't get struck by the guy. But my God, my friend, how do you say his name? Julien. Yeah, I'm not looking at it right now. Uh, I'll share this so. link in the live stream chat, but check out this guy's videos. I hope he's got more of the same because it's glorious. Taken th four years ago. Julian Signal. S E I G N O L. Julian Signal. J U L I E N S E I G N O L. Well, the 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 whole purpose of this video and me showing the graphic of the way they say the sun has sun has to come in parallel rays for them and it doesn't so it's the end of the globe model from so many angles uh pun intended the sextant cannot work on a curved surface period so where are they getting their readings from always from the center of the earth which is really a circle with a radius and so what the sextant is doing is actually working using the sun as it actually is, getting the angles. But they tra transpose that as to the center of the Earth every time. But if you'd say the reading is from the center of the Earth, then the sun rays must come in parallel because of the curved surface. And since these videos prove otherwise, bye-bye globe. Yeah. Yeah, those videos are like tantamount to like a black swan almost in in essence, you know, um if you can just it show validates. one instance like that video, then therefore parallel rays are instantly debunked, obviously.
You know, QE's on the show when he brought up the black swan, that's the same time he and I talked about the sexton. <laughs> it's actually me. I lost uh, my internet connection for a second there. Uh, is that why the show was spinning? Yeah, yeah I think that if you've got a word of world live, that's why. There we go. Everything's back to normal, hopefully. Oh. There we go. Somebody sent me Adam. Thank you <laughs> for sending me NDT <laughs> number pits. That's his <laughs> job to indoctrinate children with the nonsense. How many more pits do you count? <laughs> Four. <laughs> 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 Excellent. Thank you for digging that out. But yeah, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Get them while they're young. Teach them the Earth's a spinning sphere flying through a vacuum. Say science. Right. The indoctrination has to start then because uh, when they come out... ...the adult. Well, we were all at the mercy of the state education being indoctrinated by heliocentric nonsense. No wonder that the Earth, most people think that the Earth, that they're on orbiting the sun and all that nonsense, because we all got indoctrinated. Perfect. I've got my connection back hopefully long enough to actually do an outro. The last words before I round out, I everyone stay tuned. Recording will be on effect. Uh, in, incoherent dielectric acceleration is to be refer, referred to in future as incoherent diatribe until we can see some evidence that it applies to Earth. Perfect. With that, I'll say if you are watching this on either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley Primary Extremes, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, if you are watching this live, this is where we bid you farewell. So a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you. Smash the super chat, liked, commented, shared, subscribed and all that good stuff. I've been Nathan Oakley. Stay tuned if you're watching on a Premier Ring stream, and I'll see you all in the next video.